up in Hollywood, right, girl? I don't know why they don't run at the beach or well, we don't Griffith Park. On the sand? Oh, you yeah. mean on the beach? Yeah. On the strand? Oh, yeah. That made more sense. They're running through the neighborhood. People got to go to church. Right, right. I remember they used to run down, I don't know if they still do, but they used to run down Crenshaw Boulevard through the black neighborhood. <laughs> and the black politician had protests and said, y'all never run the marathon through the black community. That's racist. And so they finally ran it, started doing it through down Crenshaw, Martin Luther King. And the black people said, we don't want this mess. Mm -hmm. We're trying to go to church. <laughs> this ain't in the way. And they stopped it. <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. Yeah, that's implied. Are they ready? Morning. You have a dream about me? No. You want to tell me in private or public? I always tell you in public. Oh. Oh, it's so crazy. That's why you're very Good morning. Welcome to Fellowship. I'm Jesse Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. You can get involved by going to our YouTube chat line, and Hank, Hank will uh, uh, pass on your questions and comments. Thank you all so much. Good morning, y'all. How's everybody? Nice. Um, any questions or comments? Yes, sir. Um, uh, the guy that called your show that was asking you, like, what was, I think it was on Wednesday or Thursday. I think it was on Bible Thumping Thursday. The one that kept asking you about, um, about like, oh, Jesse, what's something that they did that they, about Maxine Waters. Um, I caught myself getting angry about him because I know where Maxine Waters' office is because I used to do some work for well, We don't want to deal with politics here. No, 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 no. No, I'm saying, um. Uh, but do you, do you think, because um, I was getting angry. I'm like, dude, how can you not see this, right? Um, and I, when I caught myself, it just made me chuckle. Um, is it okay to, like, I guess, bring the thought to, like, to the light and then just laugh about it? Or should I just, I don't know, how do I deal with it? As long as you catch it and don't get into yeah. it. Yeah, don't get into yeah, it. Yeah, don't identify yeah. with yeah, it. Yeah, because I, I was beginning to get frustrated. I'm like, how does this guy not get it? But... Then I'm like, dude, he, he, it's not it's not your life. Right. It's not, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yes, sir. Yeah, just catch it. Catch it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Would you say like laughter and humor is is would you think laughter or humor is the spirit of the devil or good? Spirit of evil or God? If you're laughing consciously, is of God. If you're laughing unconsciously, it's of evil. Good. Amazing. Is this your first time here? Second time. Oh, okay. Amazing. I, I, I didn't have my son last time. Right on. That's it? Well, y'all sound interesting. <laughs> Did anybody do the homework? What the... Uh, did you do the whole? Uh uh, don't look at it. <laughs> what was it again? Wow. I was Did you do the homework? Kind of, yeah. What was the homework? It was to watch your heroes. Oh, yeah. Or to, how you, if you have heroes. I did it. What was the homework? Wasn't it to watch your heroes, or if you have heroes, to watch it? No. It wasn't? Uh uh. Oh, okay. <laughs> So you didn't do it. Did it have something to do with dreaming. heroes? What? Did it have something to do with heroes? I can't say. Okay. Did you do it? No. Wow. Anybody did the assignment? I In the black hat, did you do the assignment? Yeah. What was the assignment? Pay attention to uh, your heroes. No. And uh, 
to yeah yeah that was it you you, you crazy what you crazy man so what you crazy that was an assignment well then you must have gave another assignment i wrote it down so i know exactly what it was well, did you do the did you do the assignment no, i'm sorry not this week no and, and, and what was it i didn't do it so i don't remember i'm sorry i didn't do it so i don't remember Wow. Did you do it? No. You were here last Sunday, right? No, oh, you was not here last I Sunday? I wasn't here last uh, Sunday, no. Did you do it, the young lady in the brow? I thought it was pay attention to your heroes. And do what? And be conscious. What? And be conscious. No. Almost, <laughs> but no. <laughs> That is amazing to uh, uh, you. Look on your phone. No. Oh. But I'm just saying. What I'm just it? saying. I did the assignment. What was but it? I did it that day. One day only. I, th yeah. <laughs> That's all. It just took me one day. Okay. That was fast. <laughs> and what was the assignment? That's the thing. I don't remember exactly what it what? is. But uh, once you tell no, me. No wonder you only did it one day. Once you tell me, I'll tell you what my answer is. <laughs> what? Once you tell me what the assignment is, I definitely did it. I definitely did it. But you don't know what it was. It was not, yeah, I, I will know once you tell me, and then I'm going to tell you what I did. <laughs> that makes sense to me. Right. Uh, uh, did you do it, Nick? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to. Do you know what it was? I think I know how to. Yeah. I, I thought what, it, what was it? You're making me doubt myself. I thought it was the hero thing too. <laughs> it's for it's the hero thing. What? She said. She said, make a list of your heroes. No. I I I thought about something with heroes and like paid attention to that, but I didn't consciously look at it like I'm doing the assignment right now. I don't really. How remember. serious are you about working on yourself? I'm I'm serious about it. You're serious, and so why not? Because the assignments are really just out there to encourage and help work on yourself yeah. so you can overcome all this stuff by seeing stuff that you normally wouldn't pay attention to. Right. Um, <laughs> so, but what were you saying? I didn't leave here like I have to do an assignment. I think I, well, I don't think, I know that I leave here and it's like I I hear what's being said and I I watch things all week and so I know specifically yesterday I was watching my thoughts about my he heroes and reflecting on but I didn't I never took this on like I have to do an assignment. I said for one week I want you guys to pay attention to this assignment. Right. And then come back next week with some information about it. Okay, well, I must have not been paying attention oh, with okay. that last Sunday. Did you do it, Joel? Are you black? Um, well, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't really, I didn't feel like I needed to. What? I didn't feel like I needed to. You know to. what it is? Something about heroes. <laughs> you didn't feel like you needed to, but it's something about heroes. Right. right. I remember you saying it last week. Right. And I just didn't, I don't remember what exactly you said, but. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't do it then? No, well, I mean, I didn't feel like it was necessary. For you to do it? Right. And why not? Because I don't, I don't see that I have heroes. Oh. Yeah. Did you do a Frankie? Did you do it? No. <laughs> you did a shot? Uh, no, I didn't do it, and I don't remember what it is. Oh. Did you do a hake? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> and in preparing for uh, this week's... Don't say what it was, because you right. wrote it down. Sir. Right. I wrote it down last week, but in preparing for this week's service, I had completely forgotten about it and didn't even write down, because normally I'll, I'll write down last week's biblical question and right. whatever. But no, I don't 
They did not. Amazing. Can somebody shoot the baby? <laughs> um, did, you were here last Sunday, right? Yeah. Did you do the assignment? Half-assed, but yeah, I had a real experience, so. No, did you do the assignment? Half-assed, yeah. No, don't curse in church. Did you do the assignment? Half, a little, kind of. What was it? Uh, pay attention to your superheroes, and I don't, I don't remember the rest of that, but I had, I had some I haven't experienced, though. I had someone so, I've been watching so that was kind of my hero. Hold, hold a minute. Um, so what was the assignment again? I'm not totally sure, but pay attention to your superheroes. and. I never use the word superhero. Well, heroes. That's a gang. I say superheroes, heroes. All right. Thank a, you. So, did you do a hustle? I didn't know about it, but I definitely needed to do this. Do what? Whatever the question is, because I got a lot of heroes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you say you did it, even though you don't remember what it is. It was, right? Yes. It's so interesting to me that you guys don't care enough about your own life to work on it. <laughs> it's no wonder only a few are going to get that straight and narrow path. Because most people are lazy and don't care, and they just don't work on it. It's not going to happen until you work on your life. And I give out the assignment because I care enough to want, encourage you to work on your life. And the devil is not playing. It's not enough to just come here and be cute and answer the same question with the same words and blah, blah, blah. You got to seriously work on yourself if you want to be free. So I've been trying to... Well, you were here last Sunday, right? So you don't know the assignment? No. Oh, okay. No. Do you? No. You were here last Sunday. Oh, okay. Amazing. Um... So that's amazing to me. And I understand because working on yourself takes work. It takes a all day, 24 hours a day, 365 days in a year to work on yourself. It's easy to by rote learn stuff and just report it. But to do it is different. It really is different. It's easy to say, oh, I'm a Christian. And I'm this, and repeat, that's easy. That takes no work at all. But you're not going to be free just by coming here and listening and repeat what I say. It's not going to work that way. The devil loves it when you guys don't work on yourself. Well, he knows when you're playing a game and you're just intellectually quoting stuff and don't really care, and he loves it that way. Amazing. So you say you worked on it, you just don't remember what it is. Yes, and I also just wanted to add, I really did do a lot of work on myself this past week, and I took a lot of time to contemplate the biblical question. I actually met with some girl, some women here for dinner, and we talked about a lot of deep, meaningful things related to all of this. That was what the whole night surrounded. So, I mean, I'm not making up an excuse for myself, but I, I did the assignment that day when I left. So I, I don't recall it. You know, I, I recall it was about heroes, but I really did take a lot of time to contemplate the biblical question because I thought that that was quite deep. And, you know, it really caused me to, to ponder some things. Oh, okay. So... Um, so we're going to skip the biblical question. It says no okay. word on it. Um, are you a patriot? Yeah. No, not the biblical question. I'm sorry. The assignment for last week. Since nobody did, they don't used to talk about it. Because it just be talk. Shallow talk. So we'll skip the week work on question. Um, let's go to the biblical question. And what was the biblical question? What was the biblical question? It was, um, do you think of, wait, what was, see, now I'm a little bit, I got all twisted up in my head. What was the hate? Oh, Sean, so you have a mic. Can you, 
can you see the contradiction between the way you think and the way you, you are? are. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Absolutely. Oh, something there. Sure. Okay. Do you see the contradiction between the way you think and the way you are? I thought this question is so interesting. Um, I do. I do see a contradiction because the way I think isn't who I am, I've learned. Um, if you'd asked me this question before I came here, I probably would not have seen a contradiction. I would have said the way I think is who I am. But now I know better and I know that the way I think is a lie from the, from the enemy. And the way I am, I haven't even discovered who I am. I'm still uncovering who that person is. And can you give me an example of how you think, but really not who you are? Well, you know, it is, we actually talked about this at dinner. It is very, I, I am having some difficulty, like, I get what you say about all thoughts are all lies all the time. And I, and I receive it, I believe it, and I know it's true. However, there are times when I have difficulty disconnecting myself from a thought. The thought seems like a reasonable, rational, you know, good thought, per se. Um, so sometimes I do struggle with that. Like, I will have a thought that seems like a good thought or a thought that would be uh, helpful to someone else or to myself. And then I have to deal with the fact that, okay, well, this is not really a thought that's from God, it's from the enemy. So I do, you know, it is, I'm not quite, I'm not there. It, it hasn't totally penetrated me in a way where I completely understand it. I'm getting there and I'm working toward that daily with the silent prayer and all of that. So that's all I'll say on that. Have you ever, since working on yourself, have you thought you were there before? And now you realize you're not? Never have oh. I thought I'm there, no. Amazing. In fact, I've thought, I've had anxiety about the opposite. Will I ever get there? Because it seems very overwhelming at times when I really think about it because there are so many layers. Just when I feel like, oh my gosh, okay, I, I got this because... I didn't feel angry about something I would have felt angry about, you know, before I encountered this work. <sighs> then there's something else right underneath that, like we were talking about last week with May May. You know, it's just layers and layers, and I do find myself wondering, how long is this going to take? But then I hear your voice saying, don't ever ask how long. So it, in, in those moments, I have to admit, I do get a little, it, it feels like fear. Yeah. And what do you do in those moments? I just it, it, go through the fear. I just take it. Are you a patriot? Yes. You are a patriot? And I would what, say. And, and why do you call yourself a patriot? Because I love America. And how you know you love America? Because of the opportunities that I've been availed, the, um, the opportunities that my parents had, that they passed on to us, um, seeing my brothers thrive, and seeing that this is truly the country of freedom, and the, the possibilities are literally endless. So and so being a patriot means to love America? I, so I thought to you, is there I mean, they're, I don't, yes, as far as I know, oh, okay. as far as I know. Are you a patriot? I'm going to say no. You're not a patriot? I'm going to say no, just because I don't really know the actual definition of what a patriot is. And also, like, I don't want to identify with anything. So you don't love America? I do love America. I love being in America. I don't know if I love America. But you're not a patriot. I just don't know what, if that, is that what being a patriot means? Loving America? I'm going to say no, I'm not a patriot. Have you always thought of yourself not being a patriot of America? No, I never thought of it at all. You, did you think you were a patriot? 
I never thought of it at all, either oh, or, oh, either way. Oh, you never paid attention to it? No. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> um, last Sunday you brought up, the reader asked about the word patriot. I know you, you mentioned it to me last Sunday. Oh. And as a result of uh, being a patriot, you got in trouble. And it scared you. You remember that? Oh, yes. Yes, <laughs> I do. And I wonder, did you learn from that? Because when you told me about that, it was so interesting. Yeah, did we actually discussed that at dinner. I, I'm, I don't think that I quite... Um, yeah, I'm choosing my words carefully because I don't want to go into the political, but... Um, yeah, I've, I've, I pondered that. Did you realize anything from that whole situation? She had a personal situation she ran into last week. And, uh, Personally, I absolutely pivoted. I made a, I made a, a pivot the following day. Um, my week actually turned out to be so enlightening as a result of making that pivot and what, applying some things Can you things say what that, pivot you made? I went in, um, hmm. it's, it's, you know, it, it, I probably can't say because it's sort of political and I really want to be careful right. about that. But I will say that the outcome was favorable in that I, I was very present, um, in what we discussed, and um, and I really was led by God. I just, I, I just went in with a whole different mindset. And have you been tormented this morning with thoughts? No, no, not at all. No, okay, mm -mm. amazing. All right. Um, anything else? Amazing. Y'all really working on yourselves. I saw your hand in the white shirt. Just... It was about the assignment. It oh. came to me what it was. It, it came to you? Yeah. What was it? How many of them do you have and get rid of them? How many? How heroes. Many? Be aware of your heroes. How many of them do you have and get rid of them? Right. Yeah. And so like Joel, I, I don't. I don't see people to be heroes. I don't really look up to anybody. I just take influence. You know, I observe it. And I lately try not to judge it because you can fall into that super fast without even seeing it. So, but I think I, I went unconscious about it because I just thought about it real quick. And, you know, somebody here told me, like, the biggest hero I got to get rid of is me, like, self. And that, you know, that, that made a lot of sense, but it was, like, pretty. So I just let it go. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, okay. So Amazing. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see that I have heroes. You know. Okay. Um, well, I'll just say this: y'all do what you want with your lives. You don't have to work on your lives if you don't want. You can play games with it. But the more serious you get about working on it, the, the harder it's going to get for you. And so, if you don't learn to work on your life with these, in these, with these little simple things. When the rebel meet the road, you're not going to last. It's not going to get easy for a while. The devil is desperate not to let you go. And you've been locked in for so long. And the idea of leaving him, he ain't done yet. And so it's up to you. You can stay in your hell. You can pretend you're doing it and come back and have all the right words. That's all you're going to get. It really is. Uh, the, the one thing I want to tell you is that, oh, is this your first time here? I'm oh, sorry? Yes. Speak into the mic for me there. What's your name? Your first name? Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. How did you hear about us? Actually, from my friend. Oh, nice. We're, yeah. we're, we're visiting here today. My from friend. where? From Kansas City. Oh, welcome. Thank you. Amazing. Have you overcome your anger? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Speak oh. up. Yeah, put yes, you yes, I have. Now, you forgave your mother? Yes. You told her? 
Yes, I I'm fine. I'm I'm good. Nice. Yes. What did your mother say when you went and forgave her? Well, I really there's I don't have anything to um, to say. I'm sorry to my mother for. I mean, we have a good relationship. My oh, I thought you said you forgave her. Well, <laughs> be quiet for no laugh. It just kind of caught me off guard there. Oh, I, I see. Relax. You're at home. <laughs> so you said, yes, I forgave my mother, but I don't have anything to forgive my mother my, for. My, I really, to be honest, have nothing to forgive my mother for. She's a wonderful mother, and she's done what a mother should. She's raised me to be, tried to be the best that I can be. Right. And under the, Was under, she perfect? Of course she's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. And so have you forgiven her for those things that she wasn't perfect with? Um, I'll just say there were lessons learned that she taught me to help me to be a, a strong woman. Have you forgiven her for those things that she were not perfect with? I have nothing to forgive my mother for. And because she's, she's perfect? She, because she's, she's just a human, just like everyone else here. She's, she's, you know, I have nothing to forgive my mother for. How about your father? I have nothing to give my father for. But where did your anger come from? I don't have any anger. You have no anger? No you anger. You never get angry? I can't say I've never gotten angry, but I don't have any anger. Do you ever get angry? I get disappointed, discouraged. Do you ever get angry? No. You never get angry. How can you get discouraged or disappointed without anger? I can be discouraged about something, but not angry. But like if I, I go to a restaurant and they don't have something that, a shrimp, for instance, they don't have it. And I'm and I don't get angry and go in the restaurant and tear up the restaurant and you go nuts. Sure, that's your money. No, I haven't. No, okay. I haven't paid for anything. No, I'm joking. No, I am a child of God. I am thankful for every blessing, everything He has done for me. Yes, there's been disappointments. There's been discouragement. There's all sorts of things that happen in life. But I am a child of God. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I believe one day He's coming back. And I'm doing everything I can as far as trying to be a person of kindness and love towards every person, no matter race, creed, or color. Uh, yes, things have been done to me. Things have been done to everybody. But I don't have any anger or any animosity towards anyone. I'm, my goal is to be a kind, loving, Christ-like person. And, and, I, and it's a struggle, and that's why I, I read my word, my what's Bible. What's the struggle? Well, the struggle just living in today's society with crime and things that are going on. Amazing. Yes. So Amazing. I'm not perfect. I'm, I'm not perfect, but I am a person striving to be Christ-like. How do you I know be. you're a child of God? Because the Bible tells me so. Amazing. That, that's what he tells me. You believe it? The Bible said it? Yes, I do. Amazing. Let me ask. You say you want to be like Christ. Yes, I do. Did Christ say be like him? Yeah, he has said that. Where, where in the Bible where it says, be like me? Well, I don't know the specific verses. I have my Bible with me, but I don't know the specific verses. But anyway, I've spoken what I want to say, and I, I just want to just listen and, and right just on. learn about what you guys are teaching here. And I'm mainly here to be silent. I really didn't mean to say anything. You said a lot. Well, <laughs> and I appreciate you came all well, I'm just Kansas. saying, I'm just proclaiming th that I am a child of God. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and that's who I believe in, and that's who I believe is coming back. And coming back one from day, where? Coming back from heaven and coming back and taking me to my eternal home. So you waiting on I'm, that? Yes, I do. Get in line with the Jews. Well, <laughs> well, maybe. He has already come. Yes, he has, and he's coming back again. But he has, he has already come back again. And he's coming back again. A third time? Yes, sir. He oh. is coming back. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm glad you're here. And thank you. Yeah. Is this your first time? Yes. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Laura, and I'm from Kansas City also. Right on. Yeah. Thank you for coming, Laura. Well, thank you Have for you having Have you overcome us. your anger? Yes. You, gave, you forgave your mother? I did. Did you tell her? I did. And what did she say when you forget? She said nothing. <laughs> You're like, what the? <laughs> Which was fine. Yeah. <laughs> that was fine. And how about your father? Um, I did, but he's been gone for 26 years now. Gone so where? So he's been gone oh, he for expired? a long time. He expired, Oh, yes. okay. 
Okay. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Any questions or anything? Um, no, I'm just very happy to be here. I've I've uh, been listening for a while, and uh, my friend Lisa only found out about Bond and and you a couple days ago. Oh, that so, would be a shocker. Yeah, but we've. Have, have you told? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not told, told her Lisa anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you going to ask? Have you told Lisa she need to forgive her mother? I think I've mentioned it to her before. We've had conversations about our mothers because right. uh, my mom's been gone for a few years now, oh, and, okay. and Lisa looks after her mother, and we've had some similar um, situations with our mothers. And um, I understand um, when... She kind of talks about her mom and what she's going through looking after her. But I try to support my friend and listen, and um, right she'll on. figure it out. Right yeah. on. Well, welcome, yeah. both of you. Well, thank you very much. Right. Glad to be here. Um, one thing I realized, because I do a lot of counseling, and I didn't realize the depths of evil that the devil has on our minds. I didn't realize the depth of how he controlled us. And I didn't, I didn't realize the devil can really make you do things that you, the devil made some people do stuff I didn't know even exist. And the devil is not planned. That's me, I want to encourage y'all, don't play with the devil. The devil is not joking. And he love it when you're in denial about yourself. He love it when you talk, you say we and they and all of us. He don't want you to be an individual because he doesn't want you to overcome. And what I realize is that there's not one person on this planet that love anyone. Unless you have managed to really overcome and the old year is dead, and the new year arrived, right? But nobody loved nobody. Every ego is about ego. It is not about anyone. It's all about self. And I was thinking of some incidents, and this is not to promote politics or anything, but I was thinking about some things, and, and I was thinking about family members. Family members hate one another. Family members can get two cents about one another. It's all about self. I, I was talking to a couple recently, and the man is being himself, whether you agree with it or not, and the woman is trying to change the man to make him be like what she wants him to be so she and her friends to be comfortable around him. I'm like, but that ain't going to work. If he... Stop being himself so your friends to be comfortable, then he's not going to be himself. He won't be happy. And the problem with being uncomfortable is not with your husband, it's with you. Everything you are today is inside of you. And if he changed or the world changed for you, you're still going to be unhappy. And then I was thinking about the president, Joe Biden, how his family doesn't love him. You know, when you get married, you tend to think, well, my wife going to be there for me. Or my husband going to be there for me. The wife think that, right? But it ain't, it's not true. Because I'm thinking, this man, he reminds me of my father. I don't know what's wrong with him or anything, but he reminds me of my father when he developed Alzheimer's. At some point, his wife and we had to say, that's enough. Because he had lost sense of what to do. But these people won't say to Joe Biden, you know what, you need to, you're done. But they won't say it because they want something. And they can care less about him. I'm like, that's amazing to me. We see this guy walking around like that and nobody cares. And I guarantee they all say they're Christians. Oh, yeah, I'm Catholic. I believe in God. But they don't love him. His kids don't love him. His employees don't love him. His wife doesn't love him. Because if she did, she would say, you know what? You're not going to use my husband. He's out of here. But they won't. And then there was a, a little boy. And I never did see the whole thing on this. A little boy. Um, 
I guess he is his, the father and the mother going to a, a custody, you say? Sean? Yeah, I guess it, it appeared to be a sort of, sort of like custody situation where the kid spent time with his dad and then it was time to go back with the mom, but he didn't want to. How old is the kid, appeared to be, appears to be? Five, four, yeah, four or five. Anything. He looked like he was a little black boy. Looked like he was about four or five years old. And so one day his father bring him home and he was bucking down in the back seat in the seat thing. And the father went around to open the door and, and the boy was like screaming, no, I don't want to go, I want to stay with you. I can't handle her. She's too difficult, I can't deal with her. I want to stay with you, Dad. And he was like, that's your mother. I'm like, this man doesn't even love his, unless there is somewhere he just have to take him, right? I don't know the whole situation. But he didn't love his son enough to say, okay, you don't have to go be with her. And when that boy grew up, he's already angry. He hated his mother. This little four or five year old boy appears to be that age, said, I can't deal with my mother. I don't want to be around her. I want to stay with you. But he's going to put his, unless he have to, he can put his child through that hell. And when a child grew up and he go out there violent and stealing and robbing and stuff, they're going to blame it on racism. When it starts right there in the home. And I was surprised how well he was articulating, I can't deal with her, I can't handle her, I want to stay with you, Dad. But they don't love him, even the mother, whatever the case may be. It, let's say the judge said, okay, well, he have him this time, and you have him, but you're an adult, this is your kid, you can say, you know what, go stay with your dad, I don't care. If it's going to make you happy, go stay with your father. But they don't love him enough to do that. That's like, I understand it though. Before I would not have understood it, but I do now. And then there was a case where on a train in New York, two adult men and a, a young lady was fighting on the subway train. And I guess one of the guys ended up getting stabbed and, and or shot or something. Both. And they were, they were fighting like animals. You ever seen those um, uh, bears when they stand up on their hind legs and they attack each other? It was like that. They were fighting like animals. They just, and they didn't, they didn't appear to know each other. They didn't just sound like they disagreed or something or something. And they were fighting like animals. And then the, the little animal people went right on the train screaming, yelling in the woods, let me out. Human beings are in an animal nature until they overcome it and don't know it. They literally think that it's normal to be angry. It's normal to have suicidal thoughts. It's normal to be lonely and lost and it's normal. It's not normal. That's the hell that you're living in on earth. And don't, don't think that you have friends and family members that help you, you don't. You're on your own. You really are on your own. What was that question I asked you this morning, Joel? About the devil laugh at you and call you stupid and gullible? Oh, if you lend somebody money oh, and yeah. they don't pay you back, the devil will laugh at you. Let's say that you have a good friend or you're some social person. You go feed the homeless or you like this church person or you're the nice person and the family member. And you got a little money, so you loan them money because you're a social person, you try to be nice. And then they don't pay you back your money, you realize you've been used, and the devil laugh at you and call you stupid and gullible. He'll make you do it because he'll make you think that you're a nice person. How can you not loan this person the money? You have the money, you live in Beverly Hills. And then they're like, oh, loan me, I promise to pay you back next week. And they don't pay you. Now you feel stupid and gullible because you had a false image of yourself. You got money, so you're supposed to give. It's no wonder Christ said if you loan somebody money, don't expect it back. Just don't know what you can have it. But you got to start working on yourself because you're all alone. Each individual in this room is alone and you don't know it. You use the word friend. You use the word father and mother or daddy and mama, sister and brother, but they don't like you. 
and you don't like them, and you can test it, the moment they do something that you don't agree with, or the moment they act a certain way that didn't go along with your little standards, you turn just like that. You judge them. How could she be acting that way? I'm embarrassed. I'm not hanging out with her no more. Or some type of judgment. Because you were only pretending to be a friend or a family member because you had a hidden agenda. You want to feel good about having a family member. You want to feel good about having friends. It's all a false feeling. And so you are alone. Our government is not on our side. Our family members are not on our side, and you're not on theirs. I'm looking at the politics right now, and they're like trying to destroy each other, all for a position. They're like literally trying to do, and human beings do that to one another. We're all created in the image of God, and I like you don't see that. And if something goes wrong, you try to destroy each other. Isn't it like amazing? Yes, ma'am. You, nobody loves nobody. And nobody has love to give. I got so much love. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, so I had a quick question. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of observation the last month or so in particular. And is it normal to feel like, well, I'll talk about myself. I feel like this process, I know you don't like that word, but I'm going to use it, um, is really quite stressful. Like I'm really like you struggling. You feel like what is stressful? Like going through the overcoming, the dying of the ego. Yes. Like I try not to get into this, the mindset of like, oh, I'm overcoming, I'm doing well. Because, you know, the, the thoughts bring you up to bring you down. So it's a set up anyway. So like... As, as things are being revealed and I'm working on myself, I feel like this whole thing is really stressful and I, sometimes I just like want to check out <laughs> and like put it on like a pause yeah, and say so I'll pick it up in a couple of days, you know, and then continue. But like it, it feels, I know you talked about like the dying process itself is really difficult, but like not, not I wouldn't say anxiety or anything, but I would say it's, it's quite stressful. And is that... To, to be expected. work on yourself and die like that? Yeah. It's stressful. That's yeah. what he was talking about earlier. It is. That's what I'm telling you guys. You better take this serious. Because the closer you, the closer you get to it, the devil going to bring out all his little demons. Yeah, and he's going to make you want to give up. Yeah, I feel he's like gonna say, you, Put it off a little later today. Take a break. Mm. And come back to it. Anything to keep you from going through the fire. But don't give it to it. It's all a lie. It is dying and not you. Okay. Because I feel like once I hit one, one big thing, I feel like all of a sudden there's now like 10 little things. Yes. And they're like just jumping on the one big thing. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, Absolutely. I just want to bury myself. There are layers and layers and layers of demons inside of you, in your mind and emotions. And the only reason that it acts as difficult as it is, because for so long, you have believed that it was you. Growing up as a kid, uh, and so many incidents have happened in your life that you have overreacted to. And so it just layers the big devil and all his little devils. And so as you overcome one, there's another ready for you. That's why you should never assume that you have overcome, but just endure endure till the end. And when the devil tells you, this is too hard. You know what? Take a break. Uh, this is too much. That's not you saying that. That's him saying that inside of you. He's screaming. He's rolling about in your body. He's painful because the light is destroying him. He can't handle the light. The light can deal with him, but the darkness has no relationship with the light. And it's not you at all. So stick with it, stick with it. You're going to even go through a period where, if you stay with it, you're going to clearly see that everything's been fake. Oh, I already see that now. Everything's <laughs> a lie, everything's fake, everything we were taught is not what it is. Right. That, and I think one main thing I'm really realizing right now is that, not, not that I'm alone, but like this journey is my own. You are 100% alone. Nobody's with you. Mm-hmm. You're alone. Mm -hmm. you got to be alone to go through this. I was quite scared by that fact, I think, at first. But 
now I'm kind of trying to em embrace it and right. just keep you going. You were scared about the fact of being alone? Yeah. Uh, I understand that. But what you're going to see if you stay on it, you've always been alone anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just you were unconscious and you thought you were not alone, mm -hmm. but you were alone anyway. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing the reality that you are alone and you're going to deal with the world perfectly. When you're around family members and friends or with your kids, your husband, anybody, it's going to be a totally different relationship. Yeah. And you'll be free. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. But you are alone. Mm -hmm. People think that just because they get married, they got somebody, you ain't got nobody. Mm -hmm. All you got is some more ego fulfillment. Mm -hmm. That's all you got, more trouble. Mm -hmm. And then you fight. But you're always alone. Your mama don't like you. Your daddy don't like you. And you don't like your mom and daddy. But hang on a minute. How about like now that I forgave my mom, like well, I think two years ago, our relationship is as best as it's ever been. And there was a lot of trauma there from younger years. But like since I've forgiven her, our relationship is completely different. I mean, there's a, a boundary of the sea and different things like that. But like I view her differently now. Now that I've overcome her, right. it's... it's it's great. Like, I don't want anything from her. I don't need anything from her. If I talk to her, great. If I don't talk to her, whatever. You know, it's... It's, it's great with you, but not with her. Oh, for sure. She got her own She's still hell. in hell. Yeah, oh, for sure. And, and that's what your whole life going to be amazing. Everybody else around you still be in hell, but you'll be free and they won't know it. They'll know something different about her, but they won't know what it is. They're still... They will be thinking you think and feel what they feel, and you won't. And you're right. Your relationship with her is fine now because you have forgiven her. You dealt with her. Mm. And that's what it's going to be. Okay. But don't let the devil tell you this is too much. He will tell you that. And every human being that's going through this, he tells them the same old thing. This is too hard. This is too rough. What's going to happen? How long is it going to take? Yeah, I, I would say I remember when we first came here a couple of years ago and you was talking initially um, in the first couple of times we came about like the process being painful. And I was like, yeah, all right, how painful can it be? <laughs> like, whatever, we'll be right. right. I've dealt with worse, you know what I mean? And like now I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is tough. Like this is like hitting on some like deep, deep things of trauma and just kind of unraveling everything and how we also, you know, as a family, we're overcoming kind of all in different stages, but we're overcoming together. So we often have a lot of um, conversations in the house and, you know, the right. way that we're treating the younger two as well. Like just watching each one of us kind of grow is it's just, it's a great environment because I'm, I'm fortunate that we have each other to kind of bounce ideas and thoughts who are well. working on themselves as well. If they were not working on themselves, you'd be really catching hell, outside and inside. Yeah. But, it's but still, yeah. you're fortunate that the whole family is working on itself. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Nice. I wish it was as easy as going down and accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. I'd be so happy with that. Mm. That ain't it. I believe Jesus died for me and rose on the cross and now I'm saved and I'm waiting for Jesus. That ain't it. I wish it was that easy. I think I wish it was easy. I don't know if I would, not that I understand it. And I don't even understand to the depths of where it's going to be, I guess. But at least I know I'm on the right track now. Yes, ma'am. Stay with it. Yeah, the yellow lady had her hand in the back. Did I see your hand? Yeah, I have okay. a question. I actually stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, right? And, and don't reach out to your family member for help, though. Let's say you're like going through a pain. It's like overwhelming in here. You just want to cry. Or the devil tell you, this is not going to work. Or this is too hard. This is too hard. This is too hard. Don't go talk to your husband or your daughter or anyone about that. Because that's reaching out for help. You want to stay conscious and go through that. Go through hell consciously. Don't even look for a thought that will help you escape it. So make sure not to use your family like that. Because it just keeps you in hell longer. You don't want to reach out for anything. And then God, is, God got you. He's with you. He said, I'm with you always. Just come on, and I got you. So make sure you be careful of that, all right? 
All right, that makes sense? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, I actually have a statement first, but I have two questions. The first, the statement is that I think that for me, I was taught to get it together. Just get it together, that's what you do in life. And I think that one of the reasons why this experience or this journey is so hard is because everything is all over the place. And so how do you get it together when everything's just spilling all the way everywhere? I think it's messy for me. Uh, it's a lot of just stuff everywhere, figuratively and phys physically. But for you, the way you get it together is you let it fall all apart. Okay. Literally let it fall apart. Don't try to hold on to anyone or anything or any imagination or any thoughts or anything. Fall apart. Because that's what the problem is now. You've been trying to hold on to things. And you, you can't love the world, even the dark world inside yourself and the dark world outside yourself, inside of others. You got to fall apart. But if, you, if something's falling apart, like let's talk about a dresser. Let's talk about a bike. If a bike or a dresser is falling apart, you throw it away. You do. You don't want it anymore. Nobody wants a falling apart dresser. It doesn't function well. I'm just saying, like, there's a... But that's a physical thing. You, I mean, if you need to repair a physical thing, that's fine. Okay. But I'm talking spiritual. Right. Spiritually, you have to fall apart from all thoughts, all, all emotions, because all emotions are evil. All ideas are evil. So you have to let all that fall apart. Okay. Okay. But and physical thing, you put it back together. If you can't, if not, throw it away. So my question, uh, one question that I have is about the reference to animals. And God gave us a mind. He even talks about the mind of Christ in the Bible. And so I think that the mind is what distinctly separates us from other animals on the in the world. So... I guess for me, I'm trying to wrap my mind around what do we do with our mind, this beautiful mind that God gave us that makes us so different than other animals? Like, what did he give us this for if it's only to be tricked? But, now, he, didn't, he's, he doesn't trick us, but if it's only to be tricked. I understand. Amazing question. And this young lady dying to answer it. And then I put my two cents in. Could you repeat the question? God gave us this beautiful mind. And what is this mind good for if only to trick us? Am I right by that? Yes. Why God gave us his mindset and now it's just tricking us. What are we supposed to do with it? We're supposed to focus on him and stay present. And he will lead our mind where he wants it to go is what I'm beginning to understand. And of course, that's much easier said than done. When you say focus on him, how do you focus on him? Well, not necessarily focus on him, but by focusing on being present, we are focusing on him. So being present, which, I mean, speaking for myself, I, need, I remind myself hundreds, probably thousands of times per day to get back. I mean, I am in my head so often. I never knew how... I w before I came here, I was probably in my head 98.9% .9 of the time. I don't think I lived in reality in any way, shape, yeah. or form. So it is a constant struggle, and that's a part of this that makes it so difficult where, pe where it is. I understand why people sit in a church and hear a sermon and think that Walking up and saying, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and that's all we need to do, is the answer. I get that. Yeah. Because no one wants to, you know, we're talking about, yeah, you're dealing with these little demons, but wait until you deal with the big guy. I don't, I mean, I face little demons every day, and it's enough to allow me to see. I just was in an incident a few days ago that could have turned into a road rage incident, not on my part, but on the other driver. I didn't even know I had done something, and this driver responded in a way that was very violent, like could have led to a violent situation. Yeah. I ended up having to call uh, the you know police department. But So what do I, we do with the mind, though? It's so beautiful. Yeah, because we if do. you just stay conscious, I mean, 
be, birds and bees do that because they don't even have they don't have an opportunity to do anything else. They don't have the mind that we have. Birds and bees stay conscious. I mean, they, I don't know if they stay conscious, but I, I don't think that because they don't have the mind that we have, they don't have an option of doing anything else other than just focusing on what's in front of them. That's, why that's they what have makes to do it. They, they just build to eat bees. Yeah, like that's what makes us so make, distinctly different. Eat whatever they eat, made honey. <laughs> But that's they what makes us different. Else. That's what I'm saying. But that's what makes us distinctly different is the mind. Our well, mind you is... You notice human beings can't do anything else either but what they do. And all they do is just repeat the same thing over and over again. Nothing new. Just like an animal. They'll get a divorce and say, oh, this person is better than that one I was with. And end up with the same person. You know what I mean? Human beings are like animals that they repeat the same cycle over and over and over again, thinking that they're getting something new and better. So what's the mind for? <laughs> I mean, what's the mind? <laughs> okay. You want to respond to Yes, sir. What's the mind for? The, the mind, just like uh, the intellect, is a tool that God gives us, similar to a hammer, and we use it, and we're supposed to use it like we would a tool and then put it down when we're done with it, not try to live by a hammer. If you walk around with a hammer all the time, people look at you like you're crazy because you're supposed to use it as a tool and then put it down when you're done with it and live within. Okay. Amazing. Yes, sir. And then I'll respond because of time. Go ahead. I was going to say exactly that, what, what he said. But my hand was raised for... A different. Oh, okay. I'll yeah, come I'll back see. to you. Come back. Yeah, I'll come back to you. Um, what's the mind for if we can't use it? It's so beautiful, given to us by God. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I know that answer. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever noticed how crazy your mind is? Yes. It's a mess, huh? Yes. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the mind is a terrible thing to save. Yes, ma'am. I saw one hand. I always, <clears throat> I always say, um, our mind is our worst enemy. Yep. That's how I've lived by, like, always thinking that way, that it's our worst enemy. Yes, it is. It's your enemy. Yeah. And the reason it's your enemy because Satan lives in there. He lives in the imagination. He lives in thought. That's why God said, bring every thought into captivity every thought into captivity. What will happen though, just like Satan is dictating the mind right now, Satan makes you do everything you do. He makes you think everything you think. He makes you act out everything you do. He's controlling the mind. And so what's gonna happen if you stay with it, God will give you a clear mind. He will give you a clear mind and then his spirit, his nature will dictate the mind because the devil will be gone. And you will use the mind properly. And I highly recommend the worst thing you can do right now is use the mind. Stop using your mind. Do practical things. Make your dinner. Buy your food. Blah, blah, blah. But freedom is living without using the mind. If you stop using your imagination right now, you can be free. This very instant. If you never used it again, you would never have another pain. And God will give you a clear mind. And his clear mind, there's nothing to think about. There's nothing to worry about. You just do because you can see. You just simply live your life and life is happening for you. You don't have to make it happen. You will have a clear mind where Satan will give you a dark mind. So you gotta, that's why you have to die from the imagination. So when you overcome that, you won't use your mind as an animal nature. You will just live your life, and the, the light of the Father will guide you. And you won't have to do anything. So he gave it to us for him. He gave you to us because we're creating his image. I see, I see. <laughs> um, I did and have the real you up here is in his image, but you've been living down here in an unconscious state. Okay. 
and you don't remember what you used to be as a kid. Okay. Um, the only other question that I had, and, and I had, we had uh, an opportunity to talk about this, some w a group of women, but what is that natural draw that women have to being connected or desire uh, a very strong man if you're just, your journey is just going to be alone? What, why have that, that, that draw, that seduction or whatever that is? To, to, have a, to be with a to man. To being with a strong man. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. It's the order. And it's natural for a woman to want, as long as she doesn't do it in an unnatural way. Because in her fallen state, she can overdo that. But in her risen state, she can want for her husband in the right way. But if she doesn't get one, it's fine, too. I see. Okay. She'll still be the same God that taking care of the men would take care of her. That's why the women, even if they are married or thinking about getting married, you still have to work on yourself. Because if you don't, let's say you get with a man who is working on himself, you're going to destroy that man, mm. trying to get something from him. But if you have God, you'll be with that man. It'll be natural, and you wouldn't try to get anything from him because you already have love which is from God. But all of that will become clear if you were to stay on the path. It will be made clear to you. Wisdom will come. But as long as you your imagination, your emotional person, anger, feel good, feel this, and feel, you're never going to know God. But it will be made clear when you abandon the imagination. Yes, Raymond. Okay, you know there were uh, a couple of weeks ago. I I saw a YouTube video called "God's Kill Count," claiming how many how many millions of people God killed. But there's, but but there's one. As I read it, I realized why he killed so many people because so many people were uh, rebelling against him. They were slaves to sin. As long as you're a slave to sin, uh, unless you choo uh, choose to commit uh, commit to Jesus Christ, you uh, uh, you'll always be a slave to sin. During those days, he can only find in the whole world they can only find one decent man and not one decent woman. Mm -hmm. So he had to kill him. <laughs> That's why I always. It looks like you're gonna come back and kill some more. Yes. Things are so bad. That's why I always say the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Nice. Amazing. Any questions? Is this your first time here? Oh, what's your name? Martha. Martha? Martha. Martha. How, how did you hear about us, Martha? Oh, my daughters. Oh, those are your daughters? Yeah. Oh, a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Martha. Any questions or comment about anything? No, I'm just uh, interested in what um, everyone's talking about. Speaking to the mic for me. I'm just interested on, it's interesting. It's amazing. What do you think about what you've heard so far? Any question about that? What you've heard so far? Um, well, I haven't forgiven my mother. <laughs> you have not? No. And why not? I've never thought about it. Yeah, I understand that. Most people don't think about forgiving their mothers. They've been told, oh, you need to forgive your father but they don't know it's the mother that brings the hell in. And now that you know, will you forgive her? Yes, I'll try. Yeah, I will. You try? I will because, I mean, because I want to. All right. You know. ha were you surprised to find out you screwed your daughters up? Yes. You were surprised to find yes. out? And why were you surprised to find that out? Because we really don't talk about it, you mm -hmm. know. You just you just go with you know what's going on in that house, um, yeah. and um, you don't realize shit. <laughs> Sorry, I mean oh, shoot, 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 shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, and so when your daughter went to you and forgave you, how did you deal with that? Um. I listened, and uh, I was um, 
surprised. Um, I was thankful, but at the same time, I wasn't proud of what I've, you know, done. I understand that. And did you forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother? Well, my dad's no longer with us, but no. Well, when you, if you start working on yourself, you're going to realize that he couldn't help himself. He was afraid of your mother. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid of my mother. <laughs> yeah. Every human being is afraid of their mother. Yeah. <laughs> and every human being hates their mothers. And that's why they're afraid. And the devil tells them, oh, your mother did the best she could. You got to hurt a feeling if you forgive her. She got to get mad if you forgive her. And they think that that's love. They think that that's God, but that's evil. But you got to face her. Mm -hmm. Shake her in your boots. Yeah, no, I mean, I faced her a little bit, but not like the way, you know, you guys are talking about it. But You got to go all the way in. Yeah. I've, I've given like little things, but, you know, she's my mother. <laughs> She's your what? She's my mother. You Meaning know. what? Huh? Huh? She's my if, mother, if so you I'm, I'm, huh? you I'm going to love her, you know, I mean. To what? I'm, I'm going to love her, but I, I hear that, you know, we don't love nobody. You don't love your mama. <laughs> you hate I've your mama. I learned that today. <laughs> <laughs> did you think you loved your mother? I sure did, yes. Why did you think you love her when you had not forgiven her? Just the feeling, the feeling I, I feel, she feels something inside me. Yeah, hell, and, that's uh, hell. Well, I, I must love it. Yeah, you do. Most people love their hell. But those feelings you have for mama is hate and guilt and all that kind of stuff. The good feeling is hate and the bad feeling is hate. None of it love. But when you go and face her, God said before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive. You're not going to get in until you go and forgive, right? And so when you go and forgive your mother, God will forgive you. Don't ask her forgiveness because people don't forgive. That's why God said when we forgive them, he will forgive us. And then you enter into the kingdom, and that's when amazing things will start to happen. Mm -hmm. But you got to face her shaking in your boots, and the devil going to try to talk you out of it. Don't listen to the devil. He's there. Mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. You are a mess. And I resent you. I realize now you can't help yourself. Once you see it clearly. And you're going to be shaking in your boobs. The devil's going to be talking to you. But you'll walk away free. You really will. Because they did the best they could. They couldn't help themselves. But if you want to be free, you got to do it. And they realize your father, men end up marrying the woman they hate. They hate the mothers, so they end up marrying the mothers. And the cycle repeats itself. The wife becomes the mama, and, the, and the, the, the husband becomes the boy. And they, they screw up their kids each generation. So you got to face her. Mm -hmm. Did you know you had a white baby? Did I know what? You have a white baby. No. Yeah, you had a white child. You thought it was Mexican. <laughs> that one over there. It's my fault, yes. <laughs> you were with a white man. You thought it was a Mexican. Does she look white? She does. Yeah? And, and, yeah, and it's our fault that we didn't, I mean, we forget that we know another language. So we don't, we, we just go about life and it's like, oh, man, you know, you didn't teach your kids that second right. language. So, Amazing. Yeah. Well, forgive your mother and be still and know God. Do the silent prayer. All that hooping and hollering prayer, Lord, save me, have mercy, help my mother, bless my dad, and bless my mama, is all a waste of time. You're praying to the devil. I want you to do the silent prayer. Just start working on you. Because your daughters are truly working on themselves. You notice a change in them? I've noticed. Um, I've noticed, yes. One of them, but not the other one? One of them's been more vocal than the other. Yeah. And how you like the one that, would you prefer the one that vocal or the quiet one? The I one like, that shut up. I like, I mean, I want to say I love both of them, but I, I, I guess I hate them. But I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I love the vocalness. I love the vocalness, even though um, now hearing this, how I've reacted to it. 
Um, but I love, I want them to talk to me. Yes. Even though it hurt? I just don't know sometimes like how to answer or, I mean, I just been, I just been functioning. Right. You know? Every human being just, mm -hmm. just been all like animals, just functioning. Yes. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Well, start working on yourself, all right? Okay. And it's going to be amazing for you. You got to face your mother. I will. I definitely will. I, I, yeah, um, I can definitely face my mother, yes. It's easier said than done. Are you married? Uh, I have a partner. What? We're not, we're not married, like, you know. Oh, We've you been together with for not 26 years, yeah. Really? And do you obey him? No. No wonder you have a partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, like, what is, what, what would you consider obeying? Obeying? Okay, well, I mean, I attend to him, but. You you know? Is he handicapped? No, he's not, and I ask him the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I throw that at him all the time. <laughs> You're like, get I'm up like, and you get your own water. Feet. You're handicapped. Yes. Do you, are you angry at him? Yes. You are? And why? I mean, I'm angry at everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's true. Absolutely. Well, forgive him for being weak. He can't help it. His mother screwed him up to it. His father did not protect him from his mother. So don't hold it against him. Okay. All right. It's enough to see it, but don't be angry about seeing it, and you'll be fine. All right? That makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. All right. Oh, me. Any question? No. Okay. Let me take Joella, then I come to you. Oh, man. Right. You had a question about yeah, I'm a year to... ago. Oh, I think it had to do with, uh, she had mentioned um, that uh, the thoughts get stressful. I think you made a good point, too, is that, because um, I used to deal with this a lot, too, is we can turn the mic for me? letting go, <laughs> like letting go. You mentioned letting go. It's a good point, because sometimes that, the stress is self-inflicted because it's still trying to control things. So, like you said, letting go is just, you know, letting things be. But I've had that thought to where it's like, if I let go, what's going to happen? That means I'm not right. working on it myself, right? But it's um, so you're just like, not you trusting. you let that go, who will you be? Right. What will you be? If you're, if you're, you're going to be nothing if you let the ideas and thoughts go. He's lying to you. And it's just a form you of control. You are nothing trying to be somebody. Yeah. And it's just us trying to control the outcome of things. So, yeah, a lot of times the stress is just control, false control. If you stop fighting with thought, you would never have stress again. It would not exist. It would be stress from the outside to go to work and all that, but it wouldn't affect you on the inside. But you got to let thought go. You got to let go. I don't know what to tell y'all. You got to let your whole self go. You, you want to be conscious. You want the mind of God, and the mind of God is always present. Salvation is right here, right now, all the time. But when you go into thoughts about the past or the future or this or that, you're with Satan. You're into time. And I'm t I promise you, the more you practice being present, eventually that would be the natural way. It wouldn't be an effort anymore trying to be present. It was just, just like you wake up unconscious, you'll wake up conscious. But you got to be it. You got to practice being present. And practice the little things. You don't have to start out being. Practice walking through a door in one room and out of another. When you get in your car, Practice being aware of opening the door, putting the key in, starting the car. Most people, what they do it nowadays, they get in the car, open the door, and then get right on the cell phone. Don't even know they started the car up. You want, you want to practice being present with God, being right here, right now. God is not into time. I'll come back to you, Sean, in a minute. Yeah, I need it. Is it Merlot or Chardonnay? 
whiskey. Thank you. Oh, speaking of whiskey, I was on the freeway yesterday and it was crowded. I looked over and some guy was drinking out of a big bottle of whiskey. He was like, I'm like, let me hear a rubber again in the far right lane. <laughs> God, he had a problem. He was like, drinking that whiskey? It looked like he was mild with this. I was like, this is trouble. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And then right here. Um, one day this week, I was going about my normal um, nightly routine, trying to be a good Christian. I did, uh, I did my, um, my silent prayer, went to sleep. Then I had a very vivid, very vivid dream. Um, it was uh, someone that I, I, I have forgiven, but they, uh, they were stabbing me. Like they were, I was relaxing and um, they crept up <laughs> behind me and just started stabbing me. It was very violent. And you know, I woke up. And uh, once I woke up, uh, that um, anger spirit was like in me. I could feel it. And uh, I wanted to be angry at this person. But I, I was able to like kind of come back to consciousness. Uh -huh. But I really like for a second there, I, I kind of realized that I wanted to do something to that person or, yeah. you know, but uh, I had to really like just sit back and think like that person didn't actually do that to me. I mean, even though this person has done some stuff to me, but not to that degree. But I just I found that was uh, really amazing. But right I almost on. fell into that spirit of uh, of anger. Practice being present, really. When you are present with God, instead of in your head thinking about the past and the future, no one can hurt you. No one can touch you. Really, they can't. No matter what they did, what they said, what happened, their revenge or whatever, when you are present. No one can ever hurt you again. And God put a bubble around you, a protected bubble of presence, of consciousness, and no one can ever touch you. And believe me, the devil will try, and, and other people will try too because the devil in them, but they won't be able to do it. And you won't even be trying to protect yourself. You're just naturally protected because you're protected by love. And we don't have love in this world anymore. There's no love. Amazing, huh? Yes, ma'am. Would you say that when you do, when you are practicing being aware and being conscious during the day, and then when you have dreams, because I can relate to having like vivid dreams that are really disturbing, and I'm practicing being conscious during the day, would you say that that Satan coming when you're unconscious, trying to get you riled, riled up? Because when you awake, that's immediately what's on your mind. When you go to sleep, if you have not practiced being present, that's why, that's why you're supposed to work on yourself all day, not just first thing in the morning or last thing at night. You're supposed to practice being present because you go unconscious. And then your sleep will be fine. But if you don't, when you go to sleep, you go unconscious. And that's when the devil have his way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a mess, huh? <laughs> what a mess. Um, let me, you were going to say something earlier that you had an incident this week, and then you cursed. Oh, about the hero. Oh, okay. No, no we about don't want to talk hero. about that. Yeah, then. it was about the hero meeting your, meeting your heroes. Right, no. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So we're to love everyone and treat everyone equally, and then you say we don't love anyone. Right. I'm guessing that that is the difference between God's love, treating everyone with God's love as emotional love, or the difference between emotional love. Can you elaborate on that a minute? Emotional love is of the devil, is evil. And it's based on you getting a thrill about treating everyone right. Oh, I, I treat everybody the same, right? God's love, there is no feeling. There is only, not only, but there is understanding. Because once you understand how the devil has been driving you and making you feel a certain thing and do the thing you want to do and be crazy, right? You're going to start seeing that in everybody. And so when something does happen, you won't judge them. You will understand them. And that's what love is. And no matter what, it could be a drag queen, have a thick makeup and a long dress. You understand what's driving the drag queen. And you will not judge that drag queen because you know it's Satan driving them. 
and it won't be emotional at all. You won't feel a thing about it because human beings don't have love. Only God has love. God is love, right? So human beings don't have love. And Satan is trying to imitate God so he can give you a false emotional love. Where God gives you a dispassionate love. Which there's no opinion of you. It's not of yourself. It's of him. And he allows you to see. You don't have to feel anything about it. You just won't judge, but you would love. And love is not hating. Love is not judging. Love is not ang no anger at all. You're just a free person, and the spirit of the Father is operating through you. That makes sense? And so anyone that says they love you emotionally, they're lying. They just don't know that that emotional good feeling they feel is hate. That's why they could feel one way about you. You made a blackberry pie and gave it to them because they were sick, and they love you, right? And then they get sick again, and you don't bring an apple pie, they hate you. <laughs> and then next time they get sick, you bring a sweet potato pie, oh boy, they love you. Because they're up and down emotional. They think that feeling stuff they have is love, and it's only hate. So Two imposters. If someone says they love you, are you able to tell if they're saying they love you with God's love or it's emotional love? Or if it's God's love, do they even need to tell you that they love you? That's a good point. When it's God's love, they ain't going to tell they rarely what they say. Rarely what they say, I love you. And you, when, they, when you wake up and they be talking about, oh, I love you, you're going to know this person lying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stay far away from this one. You know what I'm saying? And, and you'll see it, but you won't fall for it. And you won't even correct them either, unless the worst comes to do it. But you would know they really don't love you. It's not real. Isn't that amazing? Yes, that's very amazing. And everybody talking about, I love you. <laughs> everybody, I love you. Even the parents talk to them, especially the mothers, uh -huh. when they talk to their children on the phone, every time before they hang up, they talk about, I love you. I'm like, they lying. Wait till that child miss one phone call. That mother like, where were you? Why do you call me? I'm your mother. You better, well, what about the love, mama, you had with the last call? Mm -hmm. It's not real, dear. Yeah, I understand. Nobody love you. And you don't love nobody. So can you like people? No. Can you like? <laughs> you, you either love them or hate them. There is you no love like. Them or hate them. Okay. There is no like. But when you drop the anger, you're going to have love. Love. The, because that phony love will disappear as well as the anger, fake love, the evil stuff. Okay. You know, amazing? It is amazing. It yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, did I see your hand? You did, but I have a question. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yeah, this week I experienced, um, I moved into a nice new luxury building, and all my friends have been around every day. Like, there hasn't been a day where I haven't been alone. But that's because you want them around. Well, it, that's correct. I want them around. And what Why? happened was is, well, what, you want them to see your new place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so what happens is, uh, <laughs> yesterday I was alone for the first time, and for the first time, being alone, present at that second, or not even present, what happened is his voice said, "You're alone. No one's here to love you anymore. You're gonna stay alone." And I was like. Where is this coming from? So I started watching it and I realized, no, I was exhausted because of these people coming around and just using me. And what happened was, is that I realized I was using them. Yep. I was like drugs. It was like I was withdrawing from all that drug energy that I had. And I was just in a, like, a state where I was like, okay, I need another hit. Where's another person? I need yep. some more love. Exactly. I need, it was just like drug, a drug. When you wake up, you're going to be surprised how evil you are. Oh, yeah. Really. Everything about you is phony. Really. It, it's going to blow your mind. You'll be like, what? I didn't know that. Yes, Sean. And then Hake. Um, would, you, would you say that there's, like, if you're doing everyday things and you're driving or you're walking through a doorway, there are things that are more important to be aware of than other, other things? You know, like if you're walking through a doorway, being aware of yourself walking through the doorway is important. But if you're focusing on like 
the, the paint on the doorway while you're walking through it, that's not as important as focusing on other things. Other things like walking through the door? Yeah, like just, just the things that you're aware of while doing that. Like yeah. certain things are more important than other, than other things, right? Give me an example of certain things being more important. Like I, if you're walking to your car at, you know, four in the morning and you're focusing on the clouds in the sky as opposed to like who's around you. Oh, yeah. You know. But the beauty about that, and you're right, the beauty about that when you walk to your car consciously, you're going to be aware of everything around you. You can hear everything and you can see everything around you. And that is important. You can see everything, and you can discern what's important and what's not important. Absolutely, in the moment. You just won't focus on the things that aren't important. That's right. It just won't occur to you. When you're present. Amazing. Yes. I saw a hand somewhere. Oh, Hake. And then we got an end. <laughs> I got a thought that I wanted to go visit that guy's uh, luxury apartment. <laughs> <laughs> And I've never <laughs> visited him before or anything. <laughs> Amazing. But somebody in the chat asks, what is a clear mind? What is a dark mind? I want to tell you this. Get rid of the dark mind, and you'll know the clear mind. And I don't want to tell you what it is, because they're going to use that to make you think you have it. He will. But work on overcoming the dark mind. And every emotional person, whether it's so-called good emotion or bad emotion, Every person that has anger has a dark mind. So work on overcoming the anger and watch those thoughts. God's going to bring you out of those thoughts. The light going to shine on the not you, the imagination. The imagination is stone evil. There's nothing good about it. That's why God said to bring it all into captivity. So when you start watching the, uh, the not you mind, all thoughts, all lies, all the time about anything, he would get rid of the darkness and you would know what a clear mind is. So just work on the, on the dark mind, and you'll know it. Because Satan, if I said what it was, Satan, you have, you think you got it. Yes, Joel. Maybe you didn't mean it like this, but I just have to disagree a little bit about the imagination, because um, like if I don't use my imagination for something, then it's, I see it's complete deception and evil, right? Because Satan makes you believe all these things aren't true. But like you say, if you don't use your imagination, right? If you don't, what do like, you mean? So, for example, is that if I'm teaching classes like dance classes, I have to think. I use my imagination to come up with different ideas or, as a tool, right? So, in that moment, like she was saying, I don't see it as evil. I see it as a tool being used. But when I don't put the tool down and I'm just letting my imagination do its thing throughout the day that's when it becomes what you're talking about, evil. So it's hard to kind of say to me, in my opinion, that the imagination is fully evil. But what do you? So when you create a new dance steps and things like that, you're using your imagination to do that? Right. Like a tool? Right. Or ideas, yeah. 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 But I'm not sure if you just, do you use thoughts or the imagination itself. Well, even reflecting, even like a more common one is like reflecting on like how your day went, how you dealt with certain things. Even in those moments, we're using a mind to remember. But I notice that when I don't stop it and put it down, the mind is keep, I'm, I'm using a tool, but now Satan's involved. So I do feel like Satan uses the mind and, and, de and deceives you, but I feel like it also can be used properly, is what I'm saying. Well, you can definitely use the mind as a tool, but you don't live by that because once you learn the stuff and you teach it to the kids, you don't need it anymore. You're not going to live by it. So then would it be, so then would you still consider the mind as an evil thing? Not when you evil. use it as a tool right. and then you put it down. Okay. But you still want to die from the imagination. Right. Don't hold on to anything in the imagination at all. I agree. Yeah. I hope that answered. No, yeah. Because I don't know what you're doing up in there dancing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so listen, do what you want. It's up to you. 
you can work on yourself or you can stay in your hell. And the beauty about God, if I can call it beautiful, God is not going to force you. Oh, I wanted to say this real fast. Oh, we didn't get into it, so I couldn't say it. The assignment thing. Ooh, I had some good stuff for the assignment. Huh? Uh, no, what a mess. Huh? I, I can't believe, I don't understand that. I understand it, but I don't, because most people are lazy. And the last thing you want to do is work on yourself, especially all day. You get up and do the silent prayer in the morning, and then you go through darkness all day long, and at night do the silent But to have to work on yourself and be aware of that all day long, who want to do that? Huh? Me too. Yes. I'm not making this a big deal about the assignment. I, there's so much stuff that I saw this week that. But you need to do the assignment. I know, and it's fine. I'm not. Wor- I'm not worried about it. No, you it. gotta do the assignment. Okay. Well, I don't know what it is now. I gotta go back and watch the tape. <laughs> All right. Listen. <laughs> what I want you to know, if you commit to it, I promise you, you won't regret it. The more you work on yourself, die, I, I understand almost when Jesus said, you know, God, I don't know why you want me to do this. It'll be okay if you let this cup pass me, go by. But if I got to do it, all right. I understand what he mean now. It's hard. That dying ego, if you want to live, though, you're going to have to die from the ego. You have once to die and once to live, or once to live and once to die, and then you're free. You got to die from the ego, or you're dead anyway with your eyes open, but you're dead. You have no life. An emotional life is not life. A needy life is not life. A fearful life is not life. Or looking for love life or trying to give love is not life. So I don't know what's wrong with y'all. This assignment, <laughs> this assignment was an amazing assignment. This assignment, assignment was get rid of all your heroes, trust no one. And I want to know how, how do you build hero, he, your hero? It's so deep. I, I was looking forward to talking with you about it. And everybody said, oh, what is I meant? I did it. I still say I did it. What? I still say I did it. You about to look at your cell phone. Yeah, but I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. But Jesse, let me just say one last thing real quick. All right. I, when I'm in the present moment, or when I'm going through my day, I am so in tune with being present that I verbally t- have to talk to myself. In other words, when I find myself going out, I will literally out loud say, Danielle, be, be present. And then I'll go through the day. Oh, there's a cup on the table. <sighs> and I'm walking through the kitchen. Oh, there are dishes in the sink. But then I feel crazy. Is that normal to do that? I'm just asking, or is that like the devil coming so in? So you say when you're present, you say all that? No, I say when I'm, when I'm, because what I'm finding with being present is that the more I'm present, the more the enemy tries to hijack my mind. Yeah. Like I'll be present and he amps it up to a, to a place where I end up verbally having to say what I'm being present about, if that makes sense. And then I feel like, well, is that the enemy or is that okay to do that? Is it okay to be verbal like that? Because I feel like it gets to the point where the minute I'm present, it's almost like I see him. Like I see, it's, it's a real spiritual battle where I see him come and try to snap. He just gets in there. So then I'll start verbally saying what is in my presence to, to keep him out, in other words. Does it make sense or no? No. That's crazy as a bat. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy I don't know how to respond. No, <laughs> Well, I feel crazy when I do you that. Are I do. Crazy. I actually do. No, you're crazy. Like seriously. <laughs> Every human being is crazy. 
There's not one. And then I got to end. I was talking to a crazy person yesterday on the phone. Well, not yesterday, Friday. And they called me up. They were so crazy. They were quoting everything I ever said. I'm like, well, how you doing? I'm a minor man of valor. But how you doing? I'm a minor man of valor. I'm like, I don't know what that means. I heard you say that, Jesse. You know what I mean. I'm like, but I don't know what you mean. Why are you saying it so fast? They were crazy. I said, do you know you're crazy right now? They're like, no, I'm not crazy. I'm like, no, you're crazy. <laughs> the whole conversation was like that. I'm like, look, I got to go. I'm talking to a nutcase right now. Every human being is crazy. The mind is crazy. The mind is evil. So it's good to know that. But I don't know what, I don't. Let me just say it in an edited way. Okay, so I'm, here I am at home or walking down the street, whatever it is. Right. And I'm saying, and I see, I feel my mind veer off into the imagination, right? And I'm, oh, be present. So I see the stop signs. I see the this, I see the that, I'm right. present. But then in those moments, I'm, I'm present, but then I'm like, oh my gosh, I wasn't present. Like I'll notice that I'm not, oh, I, I wasn't present. Right. But I'll think I'm present. Right. After I'm present, I'll think that I'm present because I was present, but then suddenly <laughs> I'm not present. It's so hard to explain. No, I'm this. not present. Okay, but, <laughs> but, but in those moments, okay, so, the, you're not so the, just let me finish this part. So the devil will literally be fighting for, I will see him like, give me, I'm, I'm getting in there, I'm getting in there, blah, 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 blah. So then in that moment, I'm like, I get so frustrated with this battle that I feel like I'm having uh, that, okay, I'm walking down the street, right? That just as an example. So I'll say, oh, there's a blue house. Oh, there's the ocean. There's a rock on the ground. Oh, there's a butterfly. So I'll just verbally start saying what's in my presence. No, stop what's it. What's in my present moment Cut it to out. stay present. Cut it out. That's what I'm saying. So that's crazy, right? Yeah. That's I was crazy. feeling crazy. I know. I gotta take some Merlot. What do I do? That's crazy. <laughs> what do I do, Jesse? Nothing. When Just that happens, let my mind go. When that happens, the... watch yourself in the darkness. Watch watch the devil acting up, and stay present of the darkness, but don't communicate with the devil. So don't say what's in my present. No. I mean, okay. it, if a thought come on, that's not me, but just I don't want present. you walking down the road just saying know, about I everything. That. I know. It's so weird. Okay, thank you. No, no, you, can, you can't. That's too much. Well, I'm, I'm working on myself. That's right. Yeah, no, that's a bit much. Okay. <laughs> what? I was going to say, you know, Staying present has everything to do with looking inside and seeing what's going on in us. And yes. I, don't, I don't think naming things is, I, I, and I know because I do that too. <laughs> Thinking it's going to help, you know? Yeah, like, you don't want to be naming and claiming the sound, the stop signs and everything. Well, not claiming. You're right, Sean. Well, no, it's, it's just another way of, of like um, not looking inward. Right. It's like distracting yourself by saying, that's outside of me, this is outside of me, instead of like focusing on how you feel about that thing. Or, you know. the, the kingdom of heaven is within. It's above and within. Right. Last word. Nobody else raise your hand. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm trying to stay present right now and just listening to uh, Danielle. Um, the, it's similar to what Jesse says when um, he says, go ahead and do your, your hooping and hollering and then do the silent prayer. So I think when you're verbalizing it, you're hooping and hollering, and you're not like doing the silent prayer. So right. that's, that's how Amazing. I looked at it. All right, man. You can have the last word. Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, I think it's giving into your thoughts. You're verbalizing your thoughts, and then you're satisfying the ego because you agree with what you're saying, and if you notice, I do the same thing. The thoughts get so crazy, i got to talk it out. And so you're just agreeing with it, and then if you notice, yeah. there's this fake calm after. Right. Like, I, I handled that. All devil. Right. Trust. Me, me. After we talk this week, did you, don't get into your business or what we talk about. Of course about. not. 
did you learn anything about yourself? Like down through the week after we talked this week? Uh, I think for me, I learned that um, this is not something that I'm supposed to rest at. Uh, I definitely need to be doing the silent prayer more. I think that there, as you go further and further, and like you said, the layers start to reveal themselves, um, you just got to constantly be looking at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really simple. And yet it feels very, very hard. And yeah. you always, and it's when, it, it's when you really get closer to yourself where you feel panicked. I think that's why I talked to you. It's because I felt very panicked. And I'm starting to realize some of the things that you said to me when I first walked in here are truer than ever. And it's, it's when they're all, when I'm, when God is getting a, I don't even know how to describe it. When it's starting to get to the place where it has nowhere else to live, it has nowhere else to go, that's what's panicking. That's, yeah. what's, that's what's going crazy. And, um, you know, I think the silent prayer allows me to partner with God. Nice. When you feel panic, let yourself be panic. Be panic. Everybody just fall apart, and like the whole world is dying, you're panicking, like, be that. Live in that and go through that, and God will save you. He said, come as you are, panicky, worried, afraid, doubtful, insecurity, angry, suicidal thoughts, wrong ideas about yourself. Be all that and go through it. And God will save you. That's what he's saving us from, all those false identities. So when you feel panicky, sit there and be panic, in panic. And it looked like you're going stone nuts. It looked like the whole world is just ending. Your fear is overtaking you. All type of emotions. Sit through it. You, you will swim across the border. It feels like you're going to sink with across the ocean. <laughs> you can't say border now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Sit through it. What causes us to have those identities, the ones you just went through? When you became angry at your mother as a little kid when she was impatient with you or she yelled at you or she tried to turn you away from your father, you became angry. And the moment you became angry, you shut off from God. You were turned away from God. And the devil nature crept in upon you, and you became that. All those emotions are of the devil. They're all evil. And you forgot about forgiveness. You forgot about not holding things personal. You forgot because as little kids, little kids know God. That's why nothing bothered them until the mother imposed their will on them and make them angry. But that's what caused it. So all those identities are emotions. Yes. Emotions, demons. And what bring on so many identities through life, once you are turned away from the Father, you start overreacting to situations. And every time you overreact, rather than be still and overcome, you overreact, you take on another identity. But if you went through situations without reacting to them, nothing can touch you. And now when you die from that ego to death, all those layers and layers of identity have to be taken away, and they're all evil. Some people call them post-traumatic stress disorder and all that mess, but it's really evil, false identities. So instead of reacting to things, just <clears throat> let it pass. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. And if you're hurting about, let's say I came down and I cut you out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do it from here. And you raise this white nasty female, <laughs> you think you have white privileges. You a Ku Klux Klan's member. I'm going to send this snatch and grab people to your store. And let's say you're standing there shaking in your boots. You think, oh, Lord, this is about to kill me. Right? You're shaking your boots. Shake and do nothing. Don't. Now, if you have to protect yourself in a physical way, I don't mean that. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm talking about all this fear and anger you feel on the inside. Take it. Shake in your boot. And don't mind the devil tell you, look how they call your name. Look at it. Shake in your boot and do nothing about it. You shall be made free from those identities. Yeah, I got flipped off on the way to work the other day. Nice. Because I wasn't going fast enough for someone behind me, and they went around me, flipped me off, and I had just a second where I was just, I was it, unbelief for a second that I got flipped off at 8 in the morning, but then my thought was they're going to have a crummy day because they've already started it off flipping people off. So I just but let see, it go. You, sh- you should have gone along with any of that stuff. You wish them well. They can't right. help themselves. Okay. And you sit there and drive through and watch though ain't gonna find it interesting that you are bothered by somebody flipping you off. So instead of thinking they're gonna have a miserable day, you just wanna wish them well. Right. Okay. Because they can't see, otherwise True. they would have done that to you. Mm-hmm. And whatever you were feeling about it, you sit through it. Don't go into conversation with the devil about it. Don't wish that person ill ill will. Mm-hmm. You overcome every feeling and thought that came with it. That's the ego death. That's another layer. And then a whole bunch of people come along and flip you off. Mm-hmm. You won't feel anything about it. <laughs> it wouldn't bother you at all. And you think, well, I used to get upset with flip-offs. Now I'm not moved by it. Well, yeah, I hadn't been flipped off in a really long time. So nice. it was a little shocking. <laughs> well, I'm glad you were. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. Think about it. So yeah. watch those feelings and do nothing about them. Okay. And don't go to the psychiatrist and let them give you medication for those feelings mm-hmm. because they'll dumb you down, you'll be high as a kite and still lost. Mm-hmm. All right? All right. Amazing. So listen, work on yourself or stay in your hell. I'm going to give the assignment one more time. Get rid of all your heroes, trust no one. I'm telling you the truth about this one. There's not one person on earth you should trust. No preacher, no deacon, no pope, no lawyer, no doctor, no psychiatrist, none of that. Your mama, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, your kids, your cat, your dog. Trust no one. Jesus said, trust no man. The heart is wicked. And he wasn't playing. Trust no one. And if y'all had done your homework, we would have got deep into that today. But whatever. Here's the, uh, the biblical question. Do you have morals and values? If so, where do they come from? Do you have morals and values? If so, where do they come from? The young lady in the back, do you have mores and values? I have no comments. You don't want to play? No. Let's play. <laughs> you a sister? Yes, I do. Do you have mores and values? I mean, I want to think I do. You want to think you do? And where do they come from? On what we were taught. Um, my mother uh, hating me. And, uh, you know, I was raised Catholic. Um, I didn't go to church. You know, I don't. Uh, but I still feel it. Um, and uh, I feel my conscience. You know, telling me what's right, what's wrong, kind of. Okay. Amazing. (laughs) Are you glad you brought your mother? Yes. What a mess, huh? Yeah. (laughs) So which one of you guys speak up to her? Me. I speak up to you. We both have, because I know my my older daughter uh, mentioned the silent prayer years ago. Right. Did I ever listen to it? No. You know. Sorry. (laughs) you You weren't ready yet. I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to say? No. Yeah. How's life? I'm doing fine. You doing fine? Yeah, trying to speak up more, but it's hard because people will come with their armies and. I'm sorry. I try to speak up more, but people get really offended and they'll come with their armies, like you say. So I'm just trying to sit still through it. Yeah. 
will stay with it. And when they build an army against you, don't judge them. Yeah. Because all of Satan's children have to build an army. They cannot stand alone. Look how hard it is for you to stand alone and go through this thing, right? Yeah. And so the children of the devil, they're not trying to overcome. They need an army. They cannot stand alone. Yeah. So just listen well. Don't try to prove anything. Uh, anything like that. Let them think and believe what they want. You don't owe the world any explanation at all. Not one. All right? Okay. I had this crazy guy call my show this week. And he was on hold for a long time. I finally go to him. You a cult. Oh. I'm like, that's not a real conversation. <laughs> How do you respond to that? I just hung up. Yeah. Um, How do you respond to dumb stuff? Good. Yes. I see myself talking to the devil sometimes, so yeah, I definitely have to just hang up on them too and let them go. Yes. Don't talk to the devil inside of your mind, and don't talk to the devil inside of other people. No more yeah. conversation with the devil. Let them say and think what they want. That's their hell. Don't go into their hell with them. Right. All right? Yeah. How you feel about bringing your mama? I'm feeling good. Um... Trying to bring it to a women's forum next. Oh, good. The women's forum this Thursday. Come this Thursday. You two ladies, come this Thursday to the women's forum. No, we're going to have time today. No, keep her here. You think you take today. <laughs> wait, till, <laughs> wait till the women's forum. No recording, no mice, no nothing. I no, I know. <laughs> I'm just playing. But yeah, the women's forum this. To I'm sorry? Just say I'm going to say I can agree to disagree with maybe some of the things that have been said today. Can you give me one thing? Just one thing before you go back tonight. All right. <clears throat> well, I'll just say this that kind of troubles me is there's so much talk about Satan and not, uh, to me, more talk about the love of Jesus Christ. I just would find that, I kind of find that a little bit disappointing that I would want to hear more about the love and the kindness and things to spread. I'm just hearing more about Satan and that, and you so know so much about Satan, but I want to know more about Jesus and his love and what he's doing when he came down here to help mankind. That, I guess that's the part that troubles me. Right. And I'm not against anything that's been said or against anyone but no, I, it is troubling that. to me when I hear so much about Satan. Well, I promise you, when you own come to hell in you, you should know the love of God. But right now, you don't know the love of Jesus. I know the love of oh, Jesus. God. I know it. Oh, no. Yeah, I do. You, oh, no. Yes, I do. How I, do you I, know when you don't I even know me? I promise you, you don't. Because you want more. I, I know said, the I love of Jesus. I want to hear about the love of Jesus. Well, I'm saying is here, I'm just saying here you're speaking of it. Where I go to church, we I hear about the love of Jesus. I'm just saying here, all I've heard to talk about is Satan. And, and every you and hear you, about and, it, you're taking your preacher crazy and lost. Okay, well, you you can say what you, you know, Ask him, will you go back next Sunday and say, are you crazy and lost? You're going to have a fit. No, well. And they're going to throw you out of the church. Well. I still have the love of Jesus. That's, That's right. all. all I need is Jesus. I don't really need anything else. I have Jesus. That's and, right. Well, you hold and when on you to say him. no one, and to say I don't love my mother, I do. I love my mother. If you loved her, you will forgive her. Okay. Well, she. Well, I've said. I'm sure many times I say I forgive you. When you're in conversations, have disagreements, will say I'm sorry and apologize and please forgive me. That happens just a part of life. You don't just supposed because, to say, please forgive me. You're supposed to say, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I don't know exactly my conversations, but I know I love my parents. They were if good parents. If you parent. love them, you will forgive them. They're forgiven for whatever. I'm, you know, I'm, they're forgiven. If that's How do so you it, feel being stuck with her? Now you got to take care of her. How to be stuck with what? Your mama. I'm happy and thankful to Almighty God that I still have a mother. No, how you feel having to take care of her? I feel honored to take care of her because she did for me. But and why because you get so miserable at time about it? You was like, I'm not miserable. What are you waiting on? I'm not. That is not me at all. That is not me at all. And you know, I, I could go before her. Go where? Go to to die. She could die before me. I don't know what the Lord has in Who store for me. Who you hope die for? Her or you? 
I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. I don't wish it. I want to live forever. Don't. What? I want to live forever. <laughs> you better hope she died first so you can have some fun. I am having fun. Oh. I well, am having well, fun. I'm every day, can. every day that I have breath and life and Jesus Christ enables me to meet people like I've met all of you people, which is an honor to meet all of you. I, I wish everyone here, whatever you're dealing with, I, I pray that God will will fix and help to restore whatever you're going through. That's what I wish for everybody. Well, and I'm going to say it, even though you say I'm not not true. I love you, and I mean it. No, you don't. I lo- yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You no. don't know how I feel. I may not know how you feel, but I but know you're I alone. know I love these people, and I wish them nothing if but the best. If you love your mama, then when you get home, forgive her and let me know what happened. <laughs> Call me. Forgive her for what? She's my, my, she's human. We're all human. We all do things. Right. Forgive her for those things okay, she did. Okay. But I don't, and, but to tell me I don't love my mother, I don't love my friend Laura. Oh, I'm Lord, sorry. You better knock the hand off your shoulder. <laughs> I'm just saying you are wrong, my brother. <laughs> I love my friend Laura and I'll tell her tomorrow when we get back to the zoo. I love you, Laura, and we'll be laughing about this. We're going to see back. how much you love Laura when she started being really honest with you. What? We're going to see how much. Well, Poor I'm Laura. not saying that, that sometimes it might not have the same agreement on things, but that doesn't mean I don't, don't w- not love her. Wait till Laura start being really honest with you. We'll see where the love is. Okay. Because she hasn't been honest with you yet. She tiptoed around it. She doesn't have to tiptoe around me. Hopefully today she will, after today she, she will. She doesn't have to. Will you stop tiptoeing, Laura? Have you tiptoed around me? I, well... Um, well, about, we don't want about, y'all fighting about on the today plane. a little bit. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't have to switch there's seats. just some just things, like I said, Lord, there's some you, things have that have been, been t- mentioned that do trouble me, but like I said. Let me do this because of time. Lord, okay. have you been tiptoeing? Regarding? Being totally honest with her. A little bit. I read my case. <laughs> okay, well, if, I still love you. I don't care. I still love you. I well, pray for, I'm going to pray for each of you. Well, then and forgive wish your you, mama. Let me know how that go. If you I've love already, your mother, My mother has her. been forgiven. My daddy, my sister, the aunt on the ground has been forgiven. I mean, I've forgiven, okay? Uh, okay, then here's what I want you to do. Go to your mother and forgive her. It's easy to sit there and say, oh, I forgave my mama. I forgave. But wait until you have to face her and forgive her. That's a different story. Your mama black. Is my mother black? Yeah. My mother probably has a lot of d- mixture in her. But is I, my she black, mo- a little bit black? She's, according to the government, she's black, okay? Oh. If she fills out paperwork for her income taxes, Ooh, she is black. Oh, I can't wait for you to face her if she's black. No wonder you gave her in your heart. <laughs> What's black? Her being black got to do with anything. You'll find my out. Mother, Lord, forget. My mother is a child of God. That's all that really matters. I'm a child of God. Being black is nothing. Okay. Go forgive mama. You're going to see what real black is. Oh. But I'm glad you came. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting conversation on the way home. That's right. Uh, but and for the first time, love her enough to be honest with her. Lord. Okay, we're, we're, we're going to be fine. All right. We're going to be fine. Yes. I don't yeah. know if you should do it before you get on the plane or after. <laughs> we're not, actually, we're not on a plane. We actually dro- rode on a train. We did a train trip oh, okay. because we wanted to dr- ride the train. Oh, y'all sitting next to each other? Well, yes. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, that's why I said it was going to be interesting. Oh, we're going to be, we're going to yeah. be fine. Because I have the love of Jesus, so I'm good. Okay. So, okay. Y'all get, I hope y'all get him too. All right. But listen, That's we see how much love of Jesus you got. Faith mama. My mother and I are fine. Right. That's what you think. I know we are. Okay. Absolutely. Last word, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> We're good to be here. Thank nice. you. <laughs> okay. I'm out of time. Thank you all. Listen, do what you want. You can stay in your hell or you can overcome it. Go and forgive your mothers, every human being on earth and your fathers, and God will forgive you. Be still and know God. All you have to do after that is watch. Let go, fall apart. And when it's so difficult, you feel like you just can't make it. 
Go through it anyway, and God is with you. You got to die the ego death. We have it in women's forum this Thursday night at 7 p.m. for ladies only. Uh, that's it, right? There. Okay. Uh, thank you for your support, your tithe office and donations and all that kind of stuff. I do appreciate it. I'm sorry we didn't just, I'm not sorry, but the people are so lazy they didn't do the homework. <laughs> <laughs> but bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank y'all. Oh, amazing.